Just uh, finally as we wrap up, and last people, we're here to 2010. What is going to look like in 2011? Where will the ramp up occur, take place? How different will the industry be in 12 months time? Or are we still waiting for looking at three years time before there's any perceptible difference? Actually, I'll start with you, Thomas. And your shopping list, will you get what you want in a year's time? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll think in 2011 we definitely will have more content as some people are doing good jobs and making sure that equipment is out there and the respective technology. And there are, uh, have been several Hollywood productions in 3D announced for 2011. We definitely will have many more 3D screens in the home. I mean, if I look at the percentage of 3D capable screens sold by the major manufacturers uh, in the last few months, projecting that into 2011 will look great. I'll think we'll have at least five, six, seven in that area uh, uh, event channels on our satellite system for the various markets. We have Germany covered, we have the UK covered. I'm sure it's just a matter of weeks and months. We'll have France and Spain covered with 3D event channels and others will follow. So, um, but I still think we will discuss about autostereoscopic displays in 2011 and still ask how we can refine the business model. And Mark? Um, from my point of view, um, you know, at the moment in the marketplace there's in the UK and across Europe there are a couple of OB companies out there um, doing 3D. Um, they're the partners we use for the World Cup mainly, so there's AMP mm. in France and there's Telegenic in the UK. They're very busy now, so I think that the, a number of the other OB companies will start to wake up and, uh, if you like, realise that there is a business proposition behind this. I mean, generating the 3D archive, if, whether it takes whether the mass market takes place in 11, 12, or 13, generating an archive is needed because you know you can't launch channels without archive footage. The work starts now. The work starts now to build those to build those archives, build those events. Um, the <coughs> The other side of it is, you know, there are higher companies investing now, so you're starting to see the higher companies invest, which points to me that 2011 will start to see a lot of events taking place. I think there'll be there'll still be an interesting model between some of the, the screen manufacturers and, if you like, the Sony corporations, the Panasonics and those guys, if you like, helping to get 3D adopted. I, th I think that model will go forward. I think, if you like, that's a new part of the market from HD. HD was more, far more, here's the technology, go and generate market yourselves, whereas I think most major brands have realised they've got to assist with that. You know, you see it with Discovery and Sony, you see it with uh, FIFA and Sony. You don't see there's going to be a Betamax and VHS in 3D? No, no. no I, don't, I, don't, I don't see that. I think, but I think the, the other side of it will be is it will be, there will be people in the marketplace who can produce high quality 3D. You know, there will be more than 20 um, convergence pullers and stereographers in a marketplace and so it will become a lot easier to produce 3D. And then we can answer the questions about which shoots you can do in 2D and 3D and which ones you really need separate crews for and that. And I think that will be a big thing for next year. Mm. So I'm going to ask Simon, while you probably have a uh, quite expensive box available <laughs> doing other things in 2011, why would the 3D market look? Um, yesterday I was looking at the, Gar the Gartner's hype cycle um, and I believe that 3D has now reached the peak of overinflated expectations. I, I'm sure you read in um, TV news. Yesterday. Indeed, indeed. And so, uh, so I believe the next stage is the trough of dis disillusionment. So I look forward to that next year. Um, no, I think, I, I think, um, I think the, uh, you know, the there are there's a lot happening, particularly in the production areas. I think uh, that's really going to take off in 3D, and, and people will start producing more and more content natively in 3D. Um, so I think that'll start to fill the content gap. I think it's going to take a lot longer for it to become mass market in the home and so it's going to continue to be, certainly for at least next year, be uh, the appointment of you event driven um, uh, offerings uh, from the pay TV operators and, and, and big, big public events of, of public interest from the likes of the BBC. So this time next year will you be taking us all out to California or even Farnborough? to see your 3D work for you. <laughs> well, I mean, we're selling a lot of um, 3D production chains or broadcasters are asking us. I think in 2011, um, pay TV broadcasters will have a better idea about what content works in a broadcaster yeah. environment. Yeah. 
they'll um, scope out the likely traction with viewers and I think they will have to get more realistic in terms of the revenue potential and I think the one thing that we do have to watch particularly from a standardization point is that the dominant 3D delivery change will become more entrenched and they could uh, represent an awkward legacy that will uh, prevent 3D moving on in the long term so I think we do need to be very very careful about what uh, delivery chains get adopted now, what screens get into the home, because that does set expectations and a starting point for what can happen in the medium to long term for 3D. Well, thank you. And we hope, as we draw this to a conclusion, that we have set some expectations and given you an insight into a market that the quality issues are addressed and that the standards issues aren't a gating factor as beleaguered the HD market. We hope you've enjoyed this, and maybe this time next year you'll be watching a similar event in 3D. Who knows? Thank you.